you stop me? Because I do not want to pay for the stupidity of my brother. Wow. Only you think it is stupid to kill the white man. I know that if you scalp a white man, the Bannocks will be blamed. But we must kill them and drive them out. No, Laios. They are too many and too wise. We'll never drive them out. I don't like them any better than you do. But we have to learn to live with them. You talk like a woman. All right, brother. Soon to be chief of my people. You handle the white man your way. I'll handle him mine. You make me ashamed to call you brother. I'm glad you brought him here. You remembered what I read you about love thy neighbor. I had to when I found he was still alive. I couldn't let even a white man to die in the sun. I'm glad he lives. I'm not sure I am. So you would rather leave our village and live here like an outcast. What are you doing here, Largos? You should never have taken that Shoshone woman as a wife. You too are the son of a chief. Your place is with your people. My people turn me away. This is my home now. Did you move the body of the white man I killed this afternoon? No. I did not move him. Why? I went back to take the scalp so I could give it to our father. This one would have made him proud. You would say the same about any white man's scalp. That was not any white man. That was the owner of all this land that once belonged to our people. You mean the white man whose scalp I saved is the owner of the range called the Ponderosa? That is what I mean. I left the white man where he fell. I know this kind of woman. If the white man lived, she would have you take him. You might even have brought him here. I will look inside to make sure. This is my place. I say there is no white man inside. You will not look. I'm sorry you visit our home only on such an errand. There is no white man here. I believe you even less than I believe my brother. You better leave. Now, Laos. He is still bleeding. Will you change the bandage while I get some fresh water? No. I can't touch him now. Stop that. You've done enough. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's enough! Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, Pauline's sudden trap at this hour. Don't worry about Paul. He can take care of himself. 
Yeah, well, he's gone awful close to Bannock country. Yeah, and them Indians been acting up out there lately, too. Well, they're getting hungry, Hoss. Can't hardly grow anything up in those mountains. Hunting gets worse every year. Pa doesn't go into Bannock country by himself. Yeah, but Adam, our property runs right up there in them foothills. That's pretty close. Well, he took his blankets with him. Maybe he's gonna sleep overnight. Hi, Ike. Howdy, boys. Where's your pa? You're up sort of late, ain't you, Ike? What do you want with Paul? I, uh, I brought him a present. I got something to talk to him about that I figure won't keep much longer. Where is he? Well, he must have just missed him on the way over. He, uh, he's been out setting traps in that foothill country right near your place. We expect him back any minute. Dad, got it. If I'd known he was going out that way, I could have saved myself the trip. Yeah, what would you bring him? Well, uh, I can show you boys while we're waiting here. Yeah. Where'd you get that? Turned it up with my plow just yesterday. It's an Indian skull. It must be 200 years old. Yeah, they show up every once in a while all over the valley. Guess there's no question about who originally lived on this land. That was then, not now. How come you to bring it to Paul? I can't figure him wanting a human skull around the place. Who said anything about a human skull? That's an Indian skull. <laughs> Ike, I wouldn't uh, use those words with Pa. You, uh, you know how he feels on the subject. Yeah, well, he knows how I feel about it, too. I got no kick about engines rolling around under my land, but I'll be dad burned if I want any live ones squatting on top of it. Your land. Yeah, my land. Your pa give it to me to homestead. Now, Ike, I don't think there are any Indians living on your land. Well, they're awful darn close to it anyhow. Your pa's got to do something about it. We'll give him your message, Ike. No, Hoss, I'll give it to him myself. I'll uh, sit with you fellas for a while and uh, wait for him. All right, you can set a while, but no more talk about Indians, all right? Suit yourself. Now, Ike, it's liable to be a long wait. As a matter of fact, it may be all night. If it is, you can sleep in the bunkhouse. And I think we can do without this. Fever is worse. Why? Why did you try to kill me? My husband did not try to kill you. He found you lying wounded in the clearing and brought you here. It was an engine that tried to kill me. I know that. You're Bannock. I am a Bannock. But I did not try to kill you. Perhaps I should have. Metsu. I didn't, I didn't mean to accuse you. I know you've, you've cared for me. I'm grateful for your help. You would have died if he had left you where you fell. What is this place? Where are we? This place is on your land. No villages or settlements. Indian villages in my land. This is not a village. Atoy and I live here alone. Why are you not with your village? I am a Bannock. She's a Shoshone. 
When we married, neither tribe would accept us. What did you find out about the Bible? I lived with a man of God and his wife for three years in a white man's town to the west. Then I met Matsu. And we will stay together no matter how many times we have to move. Who said, said anything about moving? We do not stay where we are not welcome. You, you are welcome. We would still be intruders on white man's land. You'd not be intruders if, if I gave you land. You would give land to a Bannock. If you came in peace. Our people have not signed the white man's peace treaty. Put me on my horse. Oh, I'll try to find my way home. You are not well enough yet to travel. I must, I must, I must get to a doctor. We will get him home. It will take all of God's help. All right, I tell you. I'll hold him on his horse. You pray. Ah! What happened? Where'd you find him? Sure. He will need a doctor quickly. Sure. He's badly hurt. Come inside, both of you. I'd like to know more about what happened. Don't let them red devils go in the house after what they've done to your pa. They probably tried to kill him themselves. They brought him home, didn't they? Now shut up. How did it happen? We found him wounded in the clearing. We tried to care for him, but the fever is very bad. He recovered enough to tell us where he lived. We brought him here. Do you mean my father was in Bannock country? No. No, he was on his own land. That's where we found him. You see, I told you, I told you them heathen devils were sneaking around on your land. It's a lucky thing they were there. Now keep your mouth shut, Ike. Thank you very much for what you did. You'll need rest and food. You ain't asking them to stay. It will be better if we leave. Your father's a strong man and very brave. We both hope he is better soon. No, please, please, I. I want you to stay. Well, I ain't staying in no house where they ask engines in and they make them welcome. Why don't you leave? All right. But don't you forget that I got a big bone to pick with your pa when he gets better. If he ever does. It's a very, very poor way to say thank you. I'm sorry. You would just make yourselves comfortable here. I'll be right back. We shouldn't have come here. It was a mistake. No, Matsu. It was God's will. If we hadn't brought the white man home, he would have died. He's a good man. He's promised to let us live on his land. I never believed in any white man's promises. He's resting more easily now. How long did you have to pack him? Paul's a pretty heavy fellow. Not far. We had to take him from his horse. The wound was opening again. Why don't the two of you get some sleep while we wait for the doctor to get here? I am sure my father would like to see you before you leave. Thank you. How you feeling, Paul? Not better than I did. Well, that's all we can do for him for now, boys. I want you three to take turns making sure that he stays in bed. Don't you worry, Doc. I'll make sure he takes orders. He'll stay in bed, Doc. I'll see to that. 
Hey, look, I'm sorry about that wild ride coming over, Doc. You can take it easy going back. Yes, indeed. I certainly will. I don't know how Mr. Cartwright got hurt, nor why you helped him. But one thing I do know for sure. If you hadn't helped him when you did, he'd be far beyond all help now. We can't spare men like Ben Cartwright. Thanks, Adam. I see you tomorrow, Ben. Now you rest, here. Hmm. That's an order. Thank you, Doc. See you in a little while. Boys, you mind if I have a few minutes alone with my friends? Not at all. You stay in bed, Paul. I'll be back in a minute. I don't even know your names. You have heard them before, but in your favor. My name is Atoya, and my husband is Matsu. I'll remember them. And I haven't forgotten what I told you about the piece of land. We didn't ask for it. I know you didn't. I've been thinking about it. I want you to have a big piece of land, enough for a farm. What would we do with such a piece of land? You'd farm it, raise crops, animals, live off the land. I know nothing of such things. The red man knows more about hunting and fishing. The white man knows more about farming. If we put what we know together, there will be more than enough for us all. This will never be. There is no way to begin. You offer us a farm. But I know nothing of such things. So I say, keep your farm. Let me ask you a question. Would you come to live as a farmer on your own land if I and my sons and the, the settlers in the valley would teach you and help you with the things you do not now know? It would be so wonderful, Matsu. It would also be difficult. It might not work. I might not learn. I have talked too much. I never believed such an offer could be made. The white man always takes. We will talk and pray and let you know our decision. among them in the white man's town. I know them better than you do. Perhaps you do not know me well enough. I know you very well, beloved. And I believe we can do this thing together. Why can't we stay here? I could stay here anywhere alone with you forever, Matsu. But what of our sons and daughters who will be coming, if God wills it? Would you keep them alone too? We can go back to the tribe someday. I won't always be at war. And I am a son of a chief. The youngest son. And with no great love for his brother Lagos, who will be the next chief. That is true. This is a chance to have a better way of life than we have ever known, for us and for our children. I don't know that it will be better. I only know that it will be very different. And it is this difference that frightens me. Frightens you, Matsu. You have told me that nothing frightens you. I spoke those words as a warrior and a hunter, and they were true. And I was raised to be these things, and not a farmer. You have also told me that our people and the white man must learn to live together in peace. But you are asking much more than that. You are asking me to put down my bow and arrow and pick up an axe and a plow. You are asking me to eat bread instead of meat to wear cloth instead of leather, to live in a house instead of a wikiup. You are asking me to stop being an Indian. 
And I don't know if I can do it. mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my strength. I do not know that I can do it well or even that I will not fail completely. But I will try, my dearest love, if you will stand beside me. I couldn't hardly believe my own two ears when I first heard it. Can't believe it now. Well, you might as well believe it, Ike, because it's true. Well, then, Ike, I think you're going out of your mind. Or else that engine banged you real good on the head before he stuck his knife into you. <laughs> well, whichever way it is, I ain't going to have no engine for a neighbor, and you ain't got no right to make me. Now, look, let's just simmer down and talk some sense, Ike. I don't want to simmer down. Now, you listen to me. The night that you was hurt, I come down here to get you to run off two savages that had sneaked onto your land. And they were squatting in a stinking tent right next to my boundary. Now I find out those same two savages has been given a farm by you right next to my land. And you ask me to simmer down. Now, those two savages saved my life. Yeah, more like they stuck their knife into you first. All right. Now, if you have to give them a reward, give them whiskey or money. Don't give them land. Well, don't you think that Indians at least have a, a call to share the land in this valley? No, not next door to me. What have you got against Indians? I sure would like to know. Well, I sure would like to tell you. I don't like them because they're bloodthirsty savages. They're worse than wild animals. They're twice as dangerous. And I don't like them because they're heathens. And I don't like them because they won't work. And they can't work. And because they're dirty and they stink, and they're sneaky, and they're drunks, and they're thieves, and God knows what else. Most of all, I don't like them because they scare me. I hate them. What is it about them that scares you? They got long black hair. And red skins. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to try to answer you, Ike. Not now. But someday somebody's going to have to answer for people who think like you do. There's nothing wrong with the way I think. No, I'm not going to argue that point either. But neither am I going to back down from what's my right to do. I, I promised Matsu and Atoya that piece of land, and I mean for them to have it. Yeah. Oh, why put them next to me? It's not just a piece of land, Ike. It's, it's treating them like people. I have no intention of giving them some worthless scrap up around the rocks. They've already got that. I want to give them a piece of land that they can work, a piece of land that they can farm. And that land next to yours is the best I have. And it's my intention to give it to them. If you put them on that piece, I move out. Well, that's a decision that you're going to have to make, Ike. I'd think about it a long time before I made the move. Now, look, all I'm asking you to do is, is give those two a chance. I don't want you to be a friend, just be a decent neighbor. Well, I'll tell you what kind of neighbor I'll be. I'll treat him just like there wasn't there. I won't talk to them, I won't answer them, I won't help them, I won't let them help me, I won't go on their land, and if they put a foot on my land, I'll kill them. Ike. You do anything out of line, you'll answer to me.
Look at me, Atoya. Months of work, and I am now nothing. Not an Indian. And certainly not a white man. Never mind, Atoya. <sighs> Eating bread at a table. What a thing for a warrior. It is only when you're tired that you get this way. If you've done so much and we've come so far, we're not only at peace with the white man, we've made friends. And enemies. Our close neighbor, I Taggart, is an enemy. He is difficult. But I notice that the other settlers have no love for Mr. Daggard either. <laughs> I entered this house in peace only because you were born my brother and I owe you something. The feather of the chief. Why do you wear it? Our father died two days ago, full of hatred for the white man and scorn for his youngest son. I am sorry. I loved him. And I've had no love for you, but I hope you will be a better chief than he was. I tell you one thing, Matsu. We no longer will sit in the mountains and starve while this valley is full of plenty. We no longer will sit in the mountains and talk about peace treaties. Tomorrow, the Bannock Braves go on the warpath and this valley will be full of death. I have known you would do this. I also know that you are wrong. You are the one who is wrong. You do not belong here and never will. As chief of our tribe, I ask you to come back. The day of the lance is upon us. You were once a great warrior, until this woman turned you soft. Come back to the tribe. You are needed. I am needed here, Lagos. Atoya is with child. And I rejoice for the both of you. Bring her with you. The ban will be lifted. If she carries your child, she will be welcome. It is mostly for the child that I will stay. If you stay, then you will die here like the white men you're trying to imitate. I give you till tomorrow to think on it. I wait no longer. Are you sorry now about the child? You know I prayed for that child. To your God as well as to mine. But would you go back if it were not for that? If it comes to dying, I'd rather die as a warrior fighting with my people than, than as a farmer living among strangers. Then you would go back. I might. But the child is not only important for us, but for the future of our people. I will stay for my little wife and for my child. What will you do about your brother? In the morning, I'll ride to Ben Cartwright. The settlers have to be warned even though he's your brother. I still remember the teachings of my father, Atoya. When a decision is made, it must be kept, even against a brother. Hey, Matt! <laughs> Congratulations, I just heard the wonderful news about Atoya. I only heard about it myself three days ago. Well, you know the way that kind of news travels. Women talk. Wonderful to see you. You don't get over this way often enough. Yeah, why don't you bring your pretty wife with you? Yeah, I'm, I'm digging her up a present. It's, it's a cradle. <laughs> Ain't been slept in since little Joe jumped out of it. <laughs> Save your welcome until you hear the rest of my news. The Bannocks are going on the warpath. Oh. How do you know that, Matt? Because my brother is now chief of the Bannocks, and he told me. You mean they're planning a raid? No, more than a raid. It will be war. Well, how soon is this to start? Any moment. Maybe we ought to get word to Fort Bradley. 
Uh, you know the way they are. They're not going to do anything until after there's an incident. You better warn the settlers. Get ready to ride into the valley. All right, Bob. It is good to warn the settlers, but uh, I came to warn you first. That's very good of you. No, 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 no. My brother has two people he hates. One of them is me because I won't go back and join them. The other one is you, Ben. Well, why should your brother hate me? It was my brother who tried to kill you the time we brought you home. People of this valley are getting to owe you more and more, Matt. Especially me. Why don't you and Atoya stay with us here till this thing blows over? Oh, thank you. I would like to bring Atoya here for the sake of the child. I... I will stay on my land. Good. You do that. Adam, better get word to Ike Daggett. Right. Ike Daggett is my neighbor, Ben. I will take care of warning him. Matt, I don't want you to take that chance. Don't step foot on his land. I don't like Ike Daggett, Ben, but I am not afraid of him. You have enough country to cover. I will warn the Daggetts on my way home. Bring that dang gun right into bed with us. You pay it more mind than you do me. Martha, I told you a hundred times. When you got red engines for next door neighbors, you gotta be ready for trouble, especially at night. Bah, you've been saying that for months. Staying up late, sneaking around with your dang gun, and they haven't so much as set foot on your dang place. That's because I scared them good and proper to begin with. And I kept them scared every chance. Watch out. I heard something out there. Yep. You certainly got him scared, all right. I'm gonna go see what that is. I daggered! Daggered! I daggered! his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. 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 Thanks, Ben. Quit it! What's the matter? I won't stand it. I won't stand for no heathen saying prayers in my wife's grave. Now you quit it! I can't. She ain't no heathen. 
She knows as much about the Bible as you do. What are they doing here anyway? They're Those engines that killed my Marthy. They're trying to pay the respects just like the rest of us now. They ain't got no more respect for the dead than a coyote. Quit it! I want to tell you how deeply sorry I am that my people killed your wife. I tried to warn you. Don't you talk to me, you Indian. I understand how you feel. I am sorry. You dirty, rotten, lousy, stinking savage! Mike! Hey, Mike! Hey, hey, come on! Hey, stop it! Hey. Here! There, you savage. You killed my wife, I killed yours. An eye for an eye. An eye for an eye, Ben. An eye for an eye. That's in the book. Mike! An eye for an eye. It's in the book. I can hardly recognize it. Paul? Paul, come out here. That's engine work, Paul. You don't reckon, you don't reckon Matt. Let's get him into the house. He sure done a job on him. Yeah. Wonder why he didn't finish it. He didn't want him to die. Help me! Where, where am I? Help me! Yeah. Huh? Ah! It's all right, Ike. It's all right, Ike. You with me? Ben? Ben Cartwright? It's me, Ike. Ain't, ain't so easy to kill like Dagger did. He left me, left me alive, a purpose, so as I could suffer. Who, Ike? <coughs> Who? Engine, your friend, one you tried to make into a white man, Matt Sue. Know why? Why he left me? Left me alive, Ben? He wants you. Wants you to meet him in the cave, in North Fork. He wants Ben Cartwright. So, uh, otherwise. Every settler in the valley will get what, what I got, but... What... Just didn't understand what we were trying to do. What are you going to do now, Paul? Matt wants to see me. I'll go to him. I've got to try to bring him to his senses. I own that. He's gone too far now. Ike Daggett killed his wife. Paul, we can't let you take the risk. 
Anything I've ever done has had some risk attached to it. I'll go up by the North Trail. If I'm not back by morning, you come for me. What? Hey, you forgot this. Well, that won't bring me back. Or Matt either. Matt? Not so. It's Ben Cartwright. I didn't think you would come. I got your message from Mike Daggett. He said you wanted to see me. I'm here. Then you saw what I did to Ike Daggett. I saw. Aren't you afraid? No, Matt. I'm not afraid. <laughs> You know about rawhide. It shrinks in the sun. It gets tighter and tighter. I know. Why did you come here last night? See if I could help you. All right, go ahead, help me. Give me back the wife that I loved and the child she carried. Tying me like this, bring her back. No. But I think that making you suffer enough will ease some of my pain. I guess you're right. I just wanted to help you, not hurt you. Help me? You held my arms, Ben. You let that madman shoot at Toya right before my eyes. Do you think if you hadn't held my arms, Ben, he could have done that? I say you killed Atoya just as surely as if you had pulled the trigger. Does it hurt? Yes, it hurts. Good. Good. It will get worse. Strong man, Ben. I thought you would be screaming by now. Our Father, who art in heaven. What did you say? Hallowed be thy name. Stop that. Thy kingdom come. Stop that, Ben! have done that, Ben. You shouldn't have prayed. <laughs> Is that what made you let me go? I meant to kill you. But I failed here, too. I failed at everything. I lost my wife. My brother Lagos is dead. I failed. 
fail being a white man. I fail being an Indian. You didn't fail. I don't think you could ever fail. I wanted to kill you, Ben. It was important for me to kill you, and I couldn't do it. If I couldn't torture you into hating me, then I couldn't kill you. Can you forgive me for hurting you? I did that before you cut me loose. I will help you home, Ben. No, I'll be all right. Matt? You're going home. Dear people. Yes. Uh, you'll be back. Yes. We will be back. Now, 